We are live. Good evening. Okay, there we are. How to be strong and learning more about yourself and remaining positive. So thank you for coming and joining me this evening, Paulina. I'm glad you came for OSA Friday for Females. Thank you so much, Instructor Seti, for having me here as part of this phenomenal program, OSA Women on Top. It is my honor to be sharing with, uh, with my, this time with so many amazing women. Yes, I'm excited to hear what you have to say. So let's get started. For everyone who's watching, you can post comments, but we'll answer them afterwards. So my first question to you is that your journey is very inspiring. Can you explain how you led to Paulina Aguilera International? Oh my goodness, let me tell you, it has been a long story, um, but I will make it really short for you guys. And my story started when I moved to the States um, about 21 years ago, 25 years ago. Wow, time flies, right? And I moved to the States and I was going through some very tough times growing up. I had a lot of abuse in my life. I have a, um, a lot of alcohol around me. I was a young girl. Um, there was physical abuse, there was verbal abuse, there was, you know, uh, all types of abuse. So I decided to leave the country and I thought when I moved to this country, to the States, I'm going to leave everything behind. I'm just going to move to the States, have a new life, and everything is going to be great. But guess what happened? When we move to a different place or a different part, a part of the world and you think that you're leaving everything behind, if you actually don't change those patterns and you actually don't work on yourself, it all follows you. So what happened is I moved to the States and I continued those patterns of behaviors. I had an abusive relationship. I actually had a very, very um, hard divorce that I was going through. And at that point, I had a one and a half year old. And I knew that at that moment, when we were going through this whole thing, that whenever I would go to bed, my relationship with my ex-husband would be the same, that that abuse that will continue, that that situation will continue and nothing will change. That's really when we decided to change my life. That's when I was laying on the cold floor on my bathroom crying and asking God for, and, and for me is God, for anybody else can be a higher power, can be energy, whatever it, it gives you that strength to get to the next level, you know? And I literally was crying and asking God to please help me get through this because I didn't know how I was going to survive, but I did. Um, I made it through and at that point I made a decision that I was going to share my life with so many people to make a difference. And it was going to really make a difference in this world and I was going to make it through I was going to survive and I was going to change to tell my story to teach so many women that you can make it through it so that's basically how I got to Paulina Aguilar International that's, <laughs> that's so amazing you know and I love the fact that you took something negative and you know you made it positive and and, you know, there's a lot of women out there who have been in your shoes and kind of a hide in a shell and, and it's great that you're out there because, you know, it shows other people that, hey, you know, look what she did. I can do the same, you know, and I think like a lot of people kind of need to see that before they gain the confidence to do it themselves. So kudos to you for, you know, sticking it out and having the confidence to just say, hey, you know what, I'm better and I can do better. You know, and, and, and you are so right. There's so many women that are going through this right now. Yeah. But there are so many women that don't tell their story. Yeah. You know, when I moved to the States, everybody was saying to me, hey, it's awesome. You're in the States. You have it all. Yeah. And they didn't know how lonely or how abandoned because my family was actually still in Ecuador to this day. So I was by myself. And I yeah. felt like I was failing them for not being that person that they thought I was supposed to be. Yeah. You know, so I was lonely, I was scared, I didn't have any money, and I was like, oh my God, how am I going to survive? But I couldn't tell them, because yeah. to them, I was like, you're in the States, you're supposed to be amazing. And I was like, yeah. you have no idea how lonely it is, and how scary it is for me. So really, that gave me the strength to get to, hey, let's move on, let's get your, let's get your priorities straight, and let's make it happen. 
and that's how I'm here. You know, that's yeah, and and you know, and there's just so much. You know, a lot of times when you know when you're the victim of something, you're just shut down, and so it's great to see that you stood above it. So I'm gonna go to the next question. I I read your website it was amazing. So your website <laughs> states that you're a transformational coach. Um, so we could take the literal definition of what transformational coach is. I mean, you transform people, but you know, what is your definition and description and um, mindset behind it? So my goal is to actually make a difference because we all have a story, right? Yeah. We all have something that we have gone through it. So the way that I feel that I wanted to make a difference is by reaching out to all these women to let them know that they were not alone, to let them know that there is a bright and beautiful future ahead of them if they are just willing to work on themselves and to really look at what is happening in their lives. You know, I, I am here to assure them that their story can change, but the only time their story really changes is when somebody is on the bottom of their heart thinking that we can make a difference. Yeah, We can change our story, we can change our future, but we want to, we, we have to want to do it. And a lot yeah. of times we are so scared that we kind of back off a little bit and we don't let ourselves excel at what we're good at. And to, for me, that is really, a, a transformation and the transformation happens when one person is ready look at my story if i would if i would have told you that 10 years ago or 15 years ago i was ready for this transformation i was wrong i wasn't ready i had to learn from my mistakes i had to learn from my experiences so that i can get here and really make a difference and really make a transformation you know yeah um, that is really really my dream um instructor Steffi, is to really help women to be confident again, you know, to find that clarity, to find that focus so that they can find that purpose in life because so many of us go through day to day without actually finding that purpose. And I think it's very important for us as women and for, for actually the whole world to find a purpose, to do something that is going to make a difference, is going to make a change, and that is, is going to allow us to get our dream to that next level. We stop being victims and we actually become empowered with our own abilities so that we can make a difference. And it's not no. in personal, but in our business. When, yeah, when that, that's, I love how you said that. But you know what I really took out from it is that, that you have to be ready as a person. Like, you know, you can open up so many doors of possibilities for people, but that person has to be ready themselves to accept it, to to walk through Absolutely. the door. I mean, you can you can only hold a person's hand so much. So yeah. you know, and so yeah, it does start with just building the confidence to allow that person to continue themselves. You know, and and yeah. I watch a lot of your shows on Tuesday nights. You know, you interview <laughs> a lot of ladies too, and and it's great. You know, I mean, I think like a lot of them have very inspiring stories, and and I bet there's always like one or two people out there who are like, oh, I can resonate with that person. And, you know, and I can do better, you know, so I love the fact that you're trying to empower girls and females to just be better versions of themselves. So that's great. Yeah, the group is amazing. I mean, High Heel Empower Women has been a big, a big eye opening for me because there's so many of us that are really ready to get to that next level, but we don't know how. Yeah. So this network has allowed me to get to them and talk to them and say, hey, you can do this. Let's do yeah. it today. You know, let's and empower each other. And a lot of women always compete with each other. Exactly. Actually, we should be able to empower each other. Yeah. You are so unique that nobody else can get to where you are. Nobody else can be you. And yeah. that's what we forget. And I think that's so important because I was telling somebody else that today where I was like, you know, they're like when women feel like they're in a role where there's so many of them, they feel like, oh my goodness, you know, like I have to do X, Y, and Z to, um, you know, to, to get where I need to get. And a lot of that is like, you know, backstabbing and being rude to each other. I'm like, no, like, you know, just like you said, like we empower each other and we work together to, to a higher good, because like you said, everyone's unique. So yeah, that, that's beautiful that you said that. So, well, 
I got really excited because it said that you took Qigong and, you know, being a martial artist. So I was like, oh my God, she did Qigong. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. why did you do Qigong and, you know, how do you get into it and how has it helped you? So I studied under actually Master Nung Tong Gu, who actually teaches us that life shapes us in all different ways. You know, that every experience that everything affects us in a different way. Emotional imprints us through our life, through our traumas, through our broken hearts, you know, that relationship when you had when you were 13 that you forgot about it, it has an effect on you. Yeah, you exactly. That. You know, you, or if you saw, know somebody that is very close to you, a grandparent, a parent, it actually has a, a tremendous effect in your life. So this imprint actually patterns and, and, and creates, a, I would say, like an energy field that is mm -hmm. affects your, your, your body cells, your, your energy cells, and it actually affects your body. So what yeah. I wanted to do, and I have, so I have studied under so many wonderful, wonderful people, and I have studied under Deepak Chopra, and I studied under um, Master Minton because I wanted to learn a way that I can actually use meditation and i can actually use chinese exercises and healing to mm -hmm. make a to heal all these things that were affecting me and it was through breathing through movement which is something that we are not used to it it actually the the, the slow movement of your hands the slow movement of your body it actually creates like an amazing peace inside of your body and mm -hmm. Minton actually teaches that the emotional and the wisdom healing is a fundamental key to all of the physical, mental, and the spiritual healing. So I was yeah. like, why can I not do something like that so that I cannot dissolve all these blockages that I have since I was a little girl and adult and whatever else, so that I can actually heal all the natural energy that actually flows through my body. Yeah. You know, as I heal this, I'm able to heal others. But once I'm not healed from the, from the inside, then I'm never ever going to be able to find that peace. Mm. And Qigong really helped me to calm down, to breathe, to move slowly, and to actually feel every cell in your body. Yeah. So it was amazing. But I love yeah. it. I do it all the time. <laughs> well, and, you know, and I think what it really underlies is that we're always so rushed and, you know, we take a lot in and, like, put a lot of pressure on ourselves to just success 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 yeah. that we sometimes forget to take care of ourselves and just be present in the moment and that's what i think qigong really helped you to gain was like being present accepting yourself and not being hard and evolving to a new and better person so you know the, the funny thing and that, that's a little personal story but i love getting in the pool or in a jacuzzi and actually do the whole exercises of the breathing <laughs> and the <laughs> It's so relaxing. It just yeah. feels so natural, and you're moving super slow, like a slow kind of like soup. But everything is—it's you're just focusing on right now. There's yeah. no, there is no present. There's no future. There is this exact moment. And yeah. what I'm going to choose these ten seconds that I have in front of me, and that makes a difference. Yeah, <laughs> and that jacuzzi is like a nice massage add-on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, what was one of your most, or is one of your most memorable experiences? So there is something about who I am, and I think that when when we've met for the first time, you kind of pick on this. Um, I am, you know, I I am open to energy, right? So I can talk about Qigong, I can talk about Buddha, I can talk the world energy, rooting yourself, and I'm also, um, I grew up Catholic. So for me, one of the most amazing experiences was actually visiting Assisi in Italy, where St. Francis of Assisi was born and raised. Um, as soon as I arrived, I can tell you, I felt that energy, that love, that beautiful life, that I have never felt before. And one of my greatest gifts is to feel that energy. My, one of my greatest gifts is to be able to, to pick a person by the energy, to see how I can help that person by the energy. 
And when we got to Assisi, I was with my husband, and he was able to pick it too. He was able to say, wow, this feels amazing. I mean, we were surrounded by love, by nature, and his love of animals, you know? So St. Francis of Assisi's devotion to God was expressed through his love of all of God's creation. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I realized how important it was to treat every person in your life as yourself. Yeah. It was that clarity that I got at that moment that my life was going to change for the best because I never saw a situation of a problem again. I just saw a learning experience and the love that each person, regardless of the circumstances, bring to your life. So that to me has to be the most amazing experience of my life. Wow, that, that's a, that's so awesome. But I gotta say, Paulina, like, you feel energy, but you also radiate energy. Like, um, you know, you. Like you have like this just fun loving, always smiling. So I think anyone that meets you just feels like that positive energy and vibe. And, and no matter what, even if they're having a bad day, like they just have to smile because of what you present, you know? But that, look, look about it. What is a bad day? A bad day is still a lot better than somebody else's. And that's and, what we yeah. forget. Yeah, you know, we forgot that my bad day may be the best day for somebody else. And exactly. That's as, as humans, as in a society, we are so involved on what we are doing, but we forget everything around us. And that's and that's what Saint Francis was to me, and it is to me. You know. Yeah. No, it's great. I mean, you're so right. I mean, there's always like something that could be worse, or someone that's in a worse situation. So you have to take everything in a positive light so all right next question here we go you are so busy so first of all thank you for taking time out but you have your own business you do quick step series motivational videos i mean your tuesday night show for women empowerment and you have a family i mean really how do you manage all your time i mean i think the list goes further than that but that was like what i saw tell up. you so what like, is the first thing that really really of every situation and i'm not going to tell you that it works every day but i yeah. do have a conscious mind and a mind that says okay today i'm going to focus on this and there is a lesson that i learned a long time ago um, on one of my coaches and i am not even sure which one of them but i think it was one of the most amazing coaches i had and she told me she was like you know paulina a balance is not 50 50. it's not that idea that the society has that you have to do 50 your job and 50 your family. Sometimes it may be 80% your family and 20% your job. And the next day it may be 80% your job and 20% your family. The point is to get 100% regardless of how you do it. You know, yeah. so when you have this intention that I'm going to put 100% on everything I do, or that I am going to really focus and give my best at everything that I do, there is, I am not going to have any regrets. Yeah. Because living in the moment, I'm giving you my hundred. And even if that right now, my kids, you know, I may have them go outside and play soccer while I focus on this video, or even though I, my kids have to eat at five o'clock at night so that I can actually have time to prepare for our call, whatever it is, it's still a balance. Yeah. But you have to get away from this a scale or this balance that society has put on us that is like, oh no, 50% here and 50% on your job is not. It's 80, yeah. 20, 90, 10, 60, 40, 70, 30, whatever it is, it's just giving you 100% on everything you do, put your heart and soul on everything, and let the rest fall where it needs to be. No, that's true. I mean, if you, I mean, if you let, I mean, if you do 50, 50, something will always, you know, it never works out that way. Anyways, I mean, you put 50% yes. and you get a phone call and then it's like, Oh wait, I gotta, gotta run off and do this. And then you're upset with yourself. So being yeah. flexible and knowing how to just say, okay, some, as long as you put a hundred percent in the day, that's great. Yeah. I like that a hundred percent in the day. That's so. a matter of what it is. 20, 70, 10, 20. Yeah. But that's, I mean, it's still good. You're, you're still given the hundred percent. So that's an awesome way to look at it. It's not, you know, percentages in different areas, but it's a hundred percent for the day. Yes, so I, I definitely like that. That's awesome. I, I've never heard it said quite like that, but I definitely love it. So um, 
it always makes me think about the fact that so many of us are really trying to give a, a lot of us to a job that we're not happy with or yeah. that we wake up in the morning and go oh my god i have to go to this job well if it actually that job becomes your passion, it becomes your purpose. Then yeah. You know, going, yeah. Oh my God, I can't go. I can't go. I can't go. I can't go. Yeah. Can I can make exactly. my outside video. It doesn't yeah. become So it becomes yeah. that kind of automatically. Yeah, because you're enjoying what you do. If you hate what you do, it's like, oh my God, you're dreading it. So, but if you love Stop. what you do, it's just yeah. But, but if you love it. It's just part of your it's like your kids like you love your kids you love your family if you if you love your job it's going to just kind of flow with the with the normal routine of the day yeah. so you got to love what you do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um who was or is your greatest inspiration following what you just said my family <laughs> Yeah, I, I saw a picture during Halloween and it was so yeah. cute. <laughs> we, are, we are that family that when we are doing something, we put each hand on top of each other and we are like, team awesome, you know. Aww. We are that family that goes on a bike ride and make dinner together. We also have our situations like every other family, but I can tell you that they have always been so supportive. And I had actually an, a time, um, I want to say like a year ago that I was like, you know, and my 13 actually came to me and said, Mommy, you love what you do. You give it up now. Just keep going. So they have always been so supporting that all that. I'd up without coffee, I haven't had coffee in over a year because I don't do any caffeine. But I wake up with so much energy, and I'm like, "Hey, guys!" And they're like, "Oh my god, I'm just woke up, you know." Yeah, calm down. I don't, have coffee. I, don't I don't do a lot of stuff like that, and they are like, "Here's mom," you know. She's crazy. She's fun, but she's also very attentive to the details, and and that's the family. It's the family that I do everything for. I, I want to leave a legacy, and I want to leave. Um, when when I'm gone, I want my kids to remember that there is never too late to start. It's never too late to to change your mind. Um, it's okay to evolve. It's okay to pivot. It's okay to change. But the point is, you have to do something that is going to make you happy, and it's going to make a difference in the world. If you are doing those two things, doesn't matter what you do, go with it. So yeah. my family will be my huge big inspiration every day. Oh, well, and you know, and kids are just amazing. I mean, I mean, they, I mean, they're so young and you think like, oh, they don't understand, but then they just come out with these statements and you're like, what, <laughs> you know? And, and I mean, as long as you take the time to be attentive, like you said, like they can come out with some very profound statements that just make your day or, you know, make you so happy. So family, I yeah, get it. Yeah. I remember my 13 year old was like, because I was literally having a hard time. I was like, oh my God, this is so much work, creating your company and doing all this. And she was like, mommy, you love what you do. You are honest, you are true to yourself and you care about people. Why wouldn't you do this? Oh, so that sweet. Goes, wow. Wow. That is yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. I said that, you know, not older. <laughs> and he, he got it. He, he, he looks forward. He does my video. There was one time, I don't know if you saw it, in one of my videos, we were out of town and we were riding the bikes and I was sweaty and I didn't look good. And I was trying to do the video and I just didn't get, my head wasn't in it. So he goes, I'll do it. I was like, seriously? Hey, mommy, I'll do it. And if you actually look at my, my 40, what is it, 46 weeks, there is one or two videos that my son did it because he wow. was, We're back. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> you froze for a second. No, but uh, that's great that your son was willing to to take lead on that. That's amazing that he's so supportive and would want to be part of something, you know. And it's great to see when family wants to be part of something so profound like you, like what you're doing, you know. Thanks. So, um, if someone was to write a book about you, 
What would the title be? I. I would. And let me explain that. <laughs> I don't hear no as an answer. I have been doing sales for 15 years. So a no as an answer for me is a possibly, a maybe later, a maybe tomorrow. A, how can we figure this out so that it works for all the parties? But it has never been a no. I don't think that there is a, I think that everything in this world is possible. I think that you can achieve as much as you want, as little as you want. I think that you can be that person that you want to be, but a no or a never is just not in a vocabulary. My kids know yeah. it, I know it, that's just no is not an option. That would be my title. And, and you know, and in, in a lot of ways, like, um, I think people just kind of succumb to like the no, like, you know, I can't do it or it's too hard or, uh, they just fall into that trap and then, you know, they don't want to find the answer or do the research behind the answer. But it's like, you know, there's always something. You just have to take the effort. And I think like right now with technology, it's just so easy to just go to that and be like, boom, I got immediate satisfaction that people don't take the, the time to just step back and read and really invest that energy into being like, let me learn because if you take the time to even learn just a little bit, like five to 10 minutes a day, that no is going to constantly become a yes eventually, you know? Exactly. And, and yeah. we told you can't hear a no because when there is so many doors that they close on you, and I, I always used to say when they close the door on me and they were like, no, I'm not interested. I was like, oh, I totally understand. I know that you're super busy right now. However, next week I'm in the area, I'll stop and say hello. We yeah. want to say no to that. Yeah. It's the same in our lives. When somebody is having a hard time, they are going to close the door. They're going yeah. to say, oh, I'm not interested. But if you say, look, I'm, not, I'm here whenever you're ready. Yeah. I'm here to support you. I'm here to love you. And if you are not ready right now, take your time. And when, you're up, when you open the door, you'll come right in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, just patience and, and meeting a person where they're at and being where you need to be at at that time. So. Yeah. That's very important. All right, I'm going to end this with um, what pointers can you give women going into business or women going through a hard time, um, you know, and staying positive and growing? I will say I have, I think I have five pointers that I really would like to say. And one of them is we all get stuck at some point. I have my own coaches. We all have coaches. Look for a coach to help you, to encourage you and to really motivate you, right? The second thing I would be, write down your goal, but create a plan of action. Because without a plan, nothing is going to happen. If you just write your goals and you go through them every day without thinking, how am I going to achieve them? There is nowhere that you're going to get. Uh, and I think that the third point would be to pivot, to be used to, 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 be a, to, to realize that there is a lot of things happening in our lives in society in the world so we need to pivot to make our business more visible we need to make sure that we adapt to the circumstances around us but at the end of the day we need to be flexible if yeah. we are stuck on this is what we do this is how i do it it's not going to get us anywhere the fourth one don't give up don't ever give up because this is the beginning of an amazing future if you are just willing to let people come and help you if you are just letting you're just willing to see what's your potential. And the last one I will tell you is that everybody has this. You got this. You know the answers. Follow your heart and do what it feels right. So many of us get stuck on what our ego tells us, or so many stuff, so many of us get stuck where um, we are not sure we have all these doubts, but we don't follow our hearts. And we're never going to go wrong if we follow it our heart so i am here for you guys i love to support you you know that i love to encourage you and i really want to take you to the next level you know let's find clarity focus let's find the purpose in your life in your business and let's make of our business proper profitable because we yeah. really need to be able to survive and to help the economy you know let's just stop our game and let's win this wonderful game of life it yeah. is for us 
It is. And that's great. And you know, what I liked is that you have your own coaches because what that shows me is that you haven't, like, you're still learning and, you know, and I, and I like that because a lot of times people feel like at a certain point, okay, I'm done. I've gotten to, you know, where I need to be. And it's like, once you've done that, you've actually stopped learning and stopped growing. So the fact of the matter is you always have to have someone or something to help you continue to evolve. And so you yeah. being a coach and saying like, I have coaches, it's just, it's great to hear because that means like you already know for yourself, like learning is like a never ending opportunity and you constantly have to be learning. You yeah, know. we always are. We are. We are. We are. We are evolving beings. Yeah. You know, we're really learning every day. And if you don't have right now the money for a coach, read a book. Yeah. Ten I fifteen minutes a night and read an amazing book. You know, read mm -hmm. Eckhart Tolle. Read something that really moves you to the next level. And then when you're ready, reach out to a coach and say, "Hey, how do we get there? Help me. Yeah. Support me. Exactly." Help me get rich I have done that and I'm going to continue to do that because I, like I said, we're never, we're always evolving. We're always learning. We're always growing. It goes back to your book. Never say no. <laughs> you know, yeah, like well, that's the, one. Now, the one I'm writing, you know, I'm writing a book. Yeah, exactly. What is that so, one about? Look, uh, look forward and never, two steps forward and never look back. All right. So for those of you watching, you better get this book. Always move yeah. forward, you know? <laughs> well, Absolutely. Paulina, as it's been a pleasure and i look forward to seeing all the great things you guys are doing if you want to be empowered and if you're females out there you know you can obviously come and contact me contact paulina you can be on osa friday for females she has a lovely show on tuesday nights so you know there's so many opportunities out here just holler thank you so much and thank you for this amazing this amazing program and the opportunity to really empower women thank you no for all problem. Your Thank you, Paulina. You have a great evening. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hey, how'd you feel about it? Oh, I think it went great. What do you think? I thought you did really well. I was gonna ask you, are you on your cell phone? No, I'm on the camera. I'm on the computer. It was kind of weird because I started off going with weird Wi-Fi, but then you started to freeze a little bit too. So I don't know what was going on. I'm actually on the laptop, which it was yeah. weird. I saw yeah. it times. There was a time that I'm like, oh, we lost both of us. Yeah, so I I was on my laptop too, so I was cool.